Hello, it's Lord Slaw here, coming back at you with another video, and the topic of today's is the best to worst Terence Dick stories. So Terence Dix is one of the famed writers of Doctor Who. He script edited the show for years, he's written loads of very famous stories, some of which are of really high quality, and to celebrate the occasion of talking about his stories, we have a very special guest on the show today. Hello, I'm Terence Dix. I was the script editor for Doctor Who for six years, but I also wrote several shows for the programme which I'm going to talk about today, you see. So at the worst spot we have the brain of Morbius. This story isn't too bad, I don't mind it, but at some points I find it to be a little dull and a little repetitive, and Sarah, I really don't enjoy Sarah Jane this, this is why I usually find it all right as a companion in the other stories, but tell us, tell us something about this story, Terran, something about, you know, how it came into fruition. Well, I wrote the scripts, I delivered the scripts, and they seemed to be happy with them. And I then made the cardinal mistake of going away on holiday. And I didn't leave any contact number because I didn't want anybody bothering me. I thought, you know, wet Bob sorted out. But when I came back, these scripts arrived, and I sat down and started reading them, and I thought they sent the wrong set, you know. There were many points of difference, obviously. And I got on the phone immediately to Bob in some range and said, what the hell was going on? And there was a sort of silence. He said, well, he said, Philip went off the robot. He didn't think we could realise it convincingly. He didn't think it would work, and so I'm sorry, he said. But you know you weren't here, I couldn't come to you, and so I just had to make it work, you see. I pointed out to him fairly forcefully that he'd made the story nonsense, you see, because the robot, okay. You can just about accept that the robot will carry out this singularly dumb exploit of putting together a sort of wagtag body. So one is supposed to be the greatest surgeon in the galaxy, why the bloody hell can't he make a decent body for Morbius? So I said to Bob, I don't object to the script, but it's not my script anymore. Use some brand pseudonym to credit it instead. And so a few weeks later, when I got my copy of the Radio Times, there was Doctor Who, the Buena Morbius by Robin Brand. His only contribution to literature, you see. So at the next spot, we have The State of Decay, a pretty interesting episode in a very bland season in my opinion, and probably my favourite of the eSpace trilogy, but go on Terence, do your spiel. Apparently, John Nathan Turner was sitting walking through a pile of scripts, labelled scripts we never did for one reason or another, and apparently the only one he wanted was State of Decay. I wanted to call it the Vampire Mutation, but um... Bid me, the script editor, wouldn't wet me, and he came up with State of Decay instead. He wanted to call it the wasting first of all. Ah, but I wouldn't have it, you see, because you're weaving yourself open to jokes about wasting everybody's time. So at the next spot we have Robot. Not anything amazing, but I still think it's a pretty decent story. It reeks of Barry Letts in an otherwise pretty dark and gothic season. And, well, uh, I do enjoy it. It could have done with a lot more Tom Baker, especially considering it's his first episode. But go on, Terence. What do you think about it? Robot was the first solo Doctor Who script that I wrote. It was the first script I did after I stopped being script editor when Bob Holmes took over from me. It was Tom Baker's first show, so it was important to get the Doctor launched for a new series. So it's kind of important for several reasons, and it was great fun to do, and worked really well, I think. So at the next spot we have The Five Doctors, a very enjoyable and very fun episode, if pretty overrated. And one of the things I really enjoy about this story is the rats and robot. It's cool, it just, it does shit, it wrecks the Cybermen, it's fun. Go on Terence, tell us about that, how did it come into being? Five Doctors originally was given to Bob Holmes' Doctor Who's 20th anniversary show. But when Bob said he didn't want to do it, Eric Saber then phoned me up and asked me if I want to do, which I took on, you know. But when I was writing it, not only did they give me all the requirements of an anniversary show, they also kept changing it. I couldn't have so-and-so, you know. It had this improvised quality which I thought was quite fun. I mean, towards the end of it, when I thought I'd finally finished, and I'd got the script, and I thought it was okay, Eric phoned me up. We were working in the same building. He phoned me up, and he said, can you come down? There's something I'm not happy about. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, what's the matter now? 
So I went down to see him, and he said, I'm not happy about the sequence where the Pertwee Doctor and Sailor Jane get to the Dark Tower. They get there too easily, they need one more obstacle in their way. He said, it's got to be exciting, thrilling, and above all, cheap. What I came up with, after some discussion, was the Weston Robot, this silvery figure which teleports about and massacres a huge gang of Cybermen, which I was quite pleased with because I never cared for them, but they were Eric's pets. Eric always wanted to have lots of Cybermen. And I think that's just about the best thing in the show, and it came from a last minute problem and a last minute whacking of the brains, you see. So at the next spot, we're getting into the really good stuff now. We have the horror of Fang Rock. It's one of my favourite episodes, definitely in my top 30. Absolutely love it. I love the creepy lighthouse setting. The rooting's pretty good. But go on, Terence. What is it all about? How did you come up with the ideas? Fang Rock was an emergency in that I'd originally sold them the show that later became State of Decay. The BBC was at that time doing Dracula as a big prestige classic serial. And suddenly a command came down from on high saying, You may not do vampires on Doctor Who. People will think you're making fun of us. So we had an emergency meeting and Bob Holmes, who'd taken over for me as script editor, said, I've always wanted a show in a White House. And I said, But Bob, I don't know a bloody thing about White Houses. And Bob said, Well, get the Whittleboy's book of White Houses and find out, Terence. So at the top spot, we have the War Games my second favourite story, it's just absolutely amazing, a masterpiece. I love this story to absolute bits, and it's weird, it's the first one Terence wrote for the show. It's so good, I mean, it's ten parts long, and it always keeps my attention. It's, I'd even go as far to claim it's the best paced episode of Doctor Who, but go on Terence, what do you think of it? Do you think it's as good as I think it is? Derek Sherwin and Peter Bryant, my superiors at the time, had two projects which both collapsed, so they had a ten-part gap in the series. And Derek suddenly sent for me and said, we've got a ten-part serial, and you've got to write it. And I knew I was too inexperienced to do it by myself, and certainly to do it in time. So I called in Mac Hulk, who was a very experienced TV writer, and my friend and mentor in the business, you see. And he and I wrote the war games together. And, you know, it's far too long. It's Patrick Troughton's wash show, but has some good stuff in it. The beginning and the end is good. There's a lot of wanting about in the middle, but in the end, we got it out. Well, thank you for coming on the show, Terence. That was an excellent time. Great to hear your opinions, and I'll see you all back next time in another video. Goodbye. I'd like to thank Jerry Hobson for being in this video, and yeah, obviously it wasn't Terence Dix, uh, it's just his Terence Dix impression has become a bit of a meme amongst my friends, and you know, I thought it was vaguely amusing to some people, so yeah, just, d this video is just a lot of fun for us basically, and I hope you enjoyed, and we love you Terence, keep being amazing.